This is how many people, including me, were first introduced to Idris Elba as Stringer Bell in the US drama, The Wire. The condo's about to come on the line in eight months. You say the word, I'm gonna hook you up something nice down there by the Hippodrome. Loft apartments, real nice. Now, as a language geek, I was like, wow, I love his American accent. And then a few years later, I saw this. It's about these very sophisticated thieves, these guys that uh, rob banks take huge amounts of money. I was like, what? Idris Elba is from London. He had me fooled with that American accent. I'm not round away no more. You wanna farm me? I'm right here. It's pretty impressive. So today we're gonna analyze Idris Elba's natural English accent. And I'm gonna pick out a few distinctive features of pronunciation. I can't wait to do this guys. It's gonna be super interesting. So let's get going. <music> Idris Elba was born in London and grew up in Hackney, which is in the east part of the city. His parents were West African immigrants and spoke Creole at home. Now, I think his accent is fascinating because it reflects London as it used to be in the 1970s and 80s, and it reflects London as it is today. His accent displays pronunciation features that weave a narrative about how London has changed and evolved over the last 30 and 40 years. So, with that in mind, Let's get straight into it. I think, what would no, it? no, no, we used to be in a little tower block in East, uh, it's North London. North London, uh, I can't give you the address, of course. But uh, North was London, illegal, yeah. yeah, it was illegal, yeah. So we start with North, North, and that first sound on the TH. This is an example of TH fronting, where the F replaces TH. Now, we find that in a few accents, particularly Cockney. Now, Cockney is traditionally the working class accent of London and particularly of the East End of London, which is where Idris Elba grew up. So we've got that first sound and it's not just here that he uses it, he uses it in other examples as well. I went to a boys school and if you said the wrong word in class, everyone would clown you and then it would be shame for like two, three minutes. I never feared that. All right, so free just there, but he doesn't always use it. Sometimes he uses which is associated with received pronunciation. Let's hear that. But that's where, you know, I celebrate people that can think on their own. All right, so we've got think, think. So he switches between the two. Sometimes he'll say th, sometimes he'll say th. And that's really common to switch between accents. I think, what would no, 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 we used to be in a little tower block in East, uh, it's North London. North London, I can't give you the address, of course. There's also quite an interesting feature there. He says address address. Now that is American English pronunciation. You're putting the stress at the beginning of the word and you're using a. So it's address. In British English, we would say address. Address. So it's a schwa at the beginning, a, uh, and then the stress has moved to the second syllable. So address. So the reason I think he used address and not address is that it's an interview in America. So he's in an American context and sometimes, you know, you might say a word differently, might use a different piece of vocabulary. There are all kinds of reasons. And in fact, I did a video all about Harry Styles' accent and he definitely has lots of American influences in his accent. Let's move on to the other TH sound, which is the voiced th, th sound. Now, really interestingly here, Idris Elba uses three different ways to say this sound. Fascinating to me. Now in Cockney, the is replaced with v, the v sound. Uh, so we have very subtle examples of this here. It just so happens though, I was good at all the other stuff, so they didn't take the piss out of me as much. Yeah, it is for sure. It's definitely to do with... All right, so other and with. However, he doesn't always use the v sound. Sometimes he uses d. Now, D is a pronunciation feature of multicultural London English, or MLE, as it's also known. Now, this is the accent of the young multi-ethnic citizens in London, in modern London, right? Now, this accent has influences of Cockney, and then also the immigrant communities of London, so mainly Caribbean, African, and Asian. It's really a fascinating accent. And so Idris Elba has incorporated a little bit of that in his accent, not a lot, but there is a little bit. So here he uses D on those. Uh, you know, those moments where... And then there's a third way that he pronounces this sound. He uses the RP, the, the sound. 
just like this. Uh, well, I answered this ad for a radio station, you know, young intern, boom, took it. Now, I did notice a slight pattern in his accent. I don't know if it's always true, but in the interviews that I saw, when there's a TH in the middle position, he'll use the Cockney V. But when the TH is at the beginning of a word, he'll use either the MLE or receive pronunciation pronunciation. So why does he use these different sounds? Well, because he's got different influences uh, on his accent, just like we all do. Uh, living in London, uh, there's a lot of received pronunciation, there's a lot of Cockney, and there's a lot of MLE, and so you're picking up all these different sounds all the time. Okay, this is fascinating. Listen to the way he says this word. I was entrusted to drive people's cars, and he asked me if I had a driver's license. I lied and said yes. So Idris says asked rather than asked. Now this is a pronunciation feature that is most associated with AAVE, which is African American Vernacular English. But its origins go way, way back to the days of Geoffrey Chaucer, who used it in the Canterbury Tales when he said, yo lovers, ask I now this question. Now, my pronunciation was probably completely wrong there, but he used axe rather than ask. And words started off having different pronunciations. So ask was originally ask, axe, and ash. Just like fish was fish, fisk, and fix. And slowly over time, one became the standard form. But the other ones didn't necessarily die. Some dialects held on to them. According to John McWhorter, who's an African-American linguist, black slaves learnt the word ax from the people that they were working with. And it became a part of their dialect. And he goes on to say how integral the word ax is to being a black American. Now there's a video that explains this topic in so much more depth and knowledge than I ever could. I really recommend you go check it out. It's part of the MTV Decoded series. It's linked right above me. Please go check it out. It's absolutely fascinating, especially if you're a language geek like me. Now there's one line I really love from McWhorter's article in the LA Times. When a black speaker gets the most comfortable, the most articulate, the most herself, that is exactly when she is likely to slide in and ax for ask. Now I love that because I feel like it really describes what's going on here. This is a fantastic interview between Idris and politician David Lammy. It's, it's thoughtful, it's insightful, and Idris is clearly very comfortable talking about his childhood. I've heard a couple of clips where he says ax, but I also stumbled upon an example of ask. The kids would ask her to sort of read a story time, bedtime story. This is an interview that he did with Channel 4 uh, and he's representing a literacy charity. And there is a, definitely a sense of formality to it. Now he uses the standard form of ask, perhaps as an example of code switching. Now code switching is when we shift between dialects or accents, and it's extremely common. I've spoken about it quite a lot on my channel. I do it all the time, all the time. Now, I see it as someone who is able to understand their audience, to understand who they're speaking to and how they need to hear things. I think that's exactly what Idris is doing here. He understands the audience that he's speaking to, that he is representing this charity, so he's using the standard form of the word. Now I may be wrong, but that's the sense that I get. And the more I study accents and look at famous people's accents, the more I see that the way in which we switch between accents, I've done it with Adele, I've done it with Paul McCartney. Everyone has changed their accent depending on the context that they're in. So I think from my perspective, this is an example of that. Anyway, as I said, I find this fascinating. And if you want to know more about this, then go check out the MTV Decoded video. It is brilliant. Okay, let's look at the next feature. And, you know, there wasn't a disappointment from my parents, but there was a warning. There was all these warning signs, you know. I wasn't the best footballer. There were kids that were amazing. Okay, so we've got warning and amazing. So that ing ing, it disappears and it's a kind of in. So warning, amazing. He does it constantly in his uh, interviews. And this is again a feature of Cockney and other British English accents. I wasn't the best footballer. There were kids that were amazing. Okay, and the last feature that we're gonna look at is the T, the T sound, which is 
so critical to understanding different accents. Now, again, it's quite interesting here. It just uses different types of T's. Let's listen in. And I found myself like in drama, the best actor, the best communicator, the best director, the best scene writer, the best. Okay, so we've got very clear there, communicator, director, writer. The T's are true T's. We can hear them very well, and that's uh, a feature of received pronunciation. He's really taking his time with those words. He wants to be clear, so he says them with the true T. He also says ability very clearly as well. Let's check that out. So I don't have any particular amazing ability, but my ability is to overlook fear. But in the same interview, he uses a glottal T on the same word. So glottal T is when the air is not released on the T. So it's ability, ability. So he says ability and ability in the same interview. And it was just like this natural ability. A glottal T is a feature of a Cockney accent, also many other accents as well. And contemporary RP has started to use the glottal T as well. So this is a pronunciation feature that spreads across different British English accents. What's really curious to me is that he uses both sounds on the same word in the same sentence. You know, at 14, I was already working Saturday job, two Saturday jobs. You know. Right, so the first one, you have the true T, Saturday. And in the second one, you've got Saturday, Saturday. So he's using a true T and a glottal T in the same sentence on the same word. You know, at 14, I was already working Saturday job, two Saturday jobs. You know. And again, he does it in this interview. And it was actually a hospital that had, no, for real, they had a, a, house, a hospital that had its own radio station. So generally speaking, when Idris Elba takes a little more time to say a word, he'll say the true T, but when it's in spontaneous speech, he'll use a glottal T. Looking at his accent, we can see that there's many different influences there. You've got received pronunciation, okay, which is associated with London and the south of England. You've got Cockney, which is from the east end of London, just like Idris Elba is. And you've got MLE, which is the modern day uh, accent of young people in London. So you've got influences from all of those things, mostly RP and Cockney. And his accent represents modern day London. It's, it's all of these influences in one accent. And what's great about someone's accent and their vocabulary is that it not only shows you where they're from, but it also shows you all the influences they've had over the years and where they're at right now. And I think that's really true of Idris Elba. I had expected there to be more American English influence in his accent, bearing in mind that, you know, most of his work is in America. He's done some big films over there. I thought there would be maybe more flap T's with that duh sound like water or something like that, but I couldn't really find it. His accent is very rooted in London. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that little analysis of Idris Elba's accent. If you've got any other suggestions of other people who I should uh, look at in terms of their accent, then please let me know in the comments below. Please share this with anyone you know that loves learning English or loves Idris Elba. And if you enjoy my analysis of people's accents, you can watch some other ones. I recently did Benedict Cumberbatch and Harry Styles. You can check those out somewhere around here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This is Tom, the Chief Dreamer, saying goodbye.